All right, in this scene, we're gonna talk about barter syndrome and it's going to be represented by Bart Simpson over here. So Bart for barter syndrome. So if you take a look, Bart Simpson is actually pretending to be a superhero, but this Reese's chocolate over here thinks that he's about to commit suicide. So he's getting very scared. This Reese's chocolate shows up in our recessive videos, autosomal recessive videos, because barter syndrome, at least the form that we need to know about, is inherited in autosomal recessive fashion. Now, this Reese's chocolate here is so scared that he's actually vomiting and going to the bathroom a lot. This helps us remember that symptoms of barter syndrome include vomiting and polyuria, and we'll see why soon. But before we get to that, I just want to mention that he's actually a baby. He's saying, Bart, don't do it. He's saying, Bart, don't do it. He's a baby. This helps us remember that barter syndrome usually affects children under two years old. It doesn't generally affect adults. This form of barter syndrome is caused by a defect in the NKCC2 gene. This sounds like neck C, a neck that can see. And if you take a look behind Bart over here, you'll see that in this scene, his neck actually has eyes. Neck C for NKCC. And the knife going through his coat over here is to help us remember that we're talking about a defect in this gene. What does this mutation lead to? Well, let's take a look up here. There's this random blimp over here with this sort of tail-like thing that looks like a nephron. And if you take a look at the thick ascending limb over here, you'll notice that there's a rabbit that got stuck in it. A rabbit got stuck in the thick ascending limb of this nephron looking tail. This is gonna help us remember that the mutation barter syndrome leads, leads to a reabsorption defect. Rabbit for reabsorption. I know it's not a great connection, but it sticks. Reabsorption defect in the thick ascending loop of Henle. And this of course is going to affect the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter. The sodium potassium chloride co-transporter is important for reabsorbing these ions. So if there's a defect in this co-transporter, these ions will remain in the nephron. And thus we find them in the collecting duct. Let's take a look at the collecting duct of this nephron looking thing. These objects are coming out of the collecting duct and are about to fall out to Bart. First thing we note is the banana. Bananas in our videos represents potassium. Potassium ends up in the collecting duct leading to a hypokalemia. We also see the salt over here to help us remember the sodium. There's also going to be more sodium in the collecting duct. This lemon over here represents acid. There's going to be more acid in the collecting duct and in the urine. And the reason for this is because since there's a hypokalemia, nephrine is going to try to compensate for the lost potassium at the alpha intercalated cell. And during that process, hydrogen will be lost. So this lemon leaving the collecting duct is going to help us remember the acid that comes out of the collecting duct. And that, of course, is going to lead to a metabolic alkalosis. And finally, the cheese over here, cheese in our videos represents calcium, is going to help us remember the calcium in the urine, the hypercalciuria. And just as a side point, these symptoms, metabolic alkalosis, hypokalemia, hypercalciuria, present similarly to chronic loop diuretic use. Meaning that if a person takes loop diuretics for a long time, they'll develop these same symptoms. And of course, the Waldo stone over here, or the Aldo stone for aldosterone. Aldosterone, as well as renin levels, will be increased in barter syndrome. Aldosterone, as well as renin levels, will be increased, and that's to make up for the volume depletion seen in barter syndrome. All right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on barter syndrome. Stay tuned for our next video, and take care.